Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here. You know darn well that I love a quirky or weird character. So, with that being said, what was one aspect or quirk of your character that was solely for roleplay purposes? Part 2. In my first D&D campaign ever, I'm playing an 8 foot tall goliath wizard named Luca. This guy can speak 4 languages, has advantage in all his skills, and is based in the school of necromancy. I'm still new, but at least in our campaign, goliaths primarily pass down their history orally and through carvings. Some of you might already know where this is going. So, imagine seeing your party's only wizard reach into their backpack, pull out their spellbook, and you recognize it's all pictures. And since my introduction into the campaign, Luca is the <clears throat> Goliath who turns to WikiHow to cast his spells. My rat folk bard is lazy. He has low strength, an average constitution, and high intelligence. Basically, he is a bookworm who hates stairs, rarely runs, and his catchphrase was, Kalan, carry me. Kalan was our half orc paladin. Him being a tiny rodent man, she easily gets him on her shoulder where he plays his banjo like a medieval boombox. One time he had to sit in a wheelchair for a month because of a magical side effect. He had his team wheel him around for three months. I actually have a half-elf bard named Lance whose tool proficiency outside his instruments is brewer supplies purely as an excuse to roleplay him as a flair bartender when he's not showing off with his loot, flute, or banjo. My bombastic, lawful, neutral vengeance paladin, Stoltus Demut, lays down the hand of justice however he deems fit. The problem is that he is gullible, easily manipulated, and incredibly strong. Imagine a relentless, belligerent, and overwhelmingly powerful vigilante who has the wisdom and intelligence of a doorknob. The best part is the rest of the party are the cautious type. They will retreat if things don't look good, but not Stoltus. I am playing a furbolg moon druid who is planting trees every day. Mostly pine and fruit trees, but when someone died, like that one time we freed a town from a vampire and his thralls, he plants a yew tree as a monument for the fallen. A yew tree is a symbol of death in mythology. Hey, the more you know. I'm pretty new to D&D and currently playing a paladin tiefling that has no memories due to the fact that when he was young, he was used as a vessel to bring forth a minor god of death from a different plane, which turned him into a warlock as well. The point was to roleplay a very kind, very righteous, and naive young man who would lose control of his voice or body every so often and say or do some nasty things, only to feel shame and remorse when he snapped back. So far, so good. Everyone in game thinks he's bipolar or traumatized. Everyone except the other warlock in the party, that is. He's fun to roleplay, but the most surprising thing is multiclassing as a paladin and a hexblade is really, really strong. <laughs> Who knew? Eh, probably everyone, not me. What a nice surprise. In our last campaign, I played a light cleric who was appointed inquisitor by her church to investigate the outbreak of a mysterious illness. To make sure for everyone to distinguish between speaking for me or my group in the interests of my church and my god, I had a mask as a spell focus which I would wear when I issued judgments, reprimands, and lectures, and when I cast spells. I loved to go on tirades against higher officials, noblemen, and wealthy traders while holding the mask to my face, depicting my god of truth, fire, and order, waiting for any wrong response to send them to their last judgment. I am currently playing a character who is based on the puppet from Five Nights at Freddy's, and my DM allowed me to give her the supernatural gift from Wildermount, known as Hollow One. In most circumstances, it would basically turn your character into a revenant with a few specific abilities. You can come back at 1 HP when you roll a death saving throw of 16 or more, you don't age and are immune to the aging spell effects, and you can use your action to unsettle an enemy to cause them to have disadvantage on their next saving throw, and while you keep your creature type, you also count as undead for spells and abilities 
that are used to detect the undead. She wasn't immune to healing spells, nor was she weak to radiant damage, but when an ally used detect undead or something, she would register on their radar. The DM was using a different system for death, so my character's ability to come back more easily on death save was meaningless. She was a construct, read Warforged, so she didn't really age all that much anyways. I have only managed to use her unsettle ability once, and it really wasn't that good. Finally, the counting as undead when detecting the undead does nothing outside of roleplay. In other words, I took a supernatural gift that was pretty much useless in the game our DM was using just to make a Five Nights at Freddy's character. And boy, did we have some fun roleplay moments from it. The party also had a cleric and a druid, which made my character being a robot necromancer being possessed by the ghost of a child a bit problematic at first. The DM also had some unique rules set up that caused it so that stressful situations would have actual effects on us, though he did it differently from sanity points. Since my character was so spooky, I naturally flavored my spells and abilities to match the horror feel of my character. And so for a while, when my character actually used her abilities, a lot of them caused nearby allies to become stressed out. Her revealing her backstory stopped it from happening anymore, but for a little while, I was causing the rest of my party detriments just for the sake of roleplay. I wasn't trying to be a butthole, and the other players didn't see it that way either. But it was still a problem at first, and completely worth it. My bard refused to sleep in beds. It was never beds, only in trees, on roofs, on the ground or floor, or in a hammock made from a bed roll and rope. He had done that his whole life and thought beds were odd. A couple weeks ago, my incubus shadow sorcerer bought a dress suit. We were heading to find our healer NPC who had been kidnapped for three months by some night hags. He never changed his appearance as an incubus, believing that the world should fall to their knees even without him changing his form. He wore nothing but a speedo his whole life, but when someone important to him was finally taken away, he knew he had to dress for the occasion. Also, yes, we got her back safe and sound. I once played a lightfoot halfling rogue who had a pet cockatiel, which is known as a bird. This was solely for roleplay and describing my character stroking this little gray bird of cuteness. Before the campaign even started though, I nerded out once about cockatiels to the DM and he said, that's it, I'm raising the minimum time for your bird to screech. I didn't expect that to be a thing when making the character, but it was a sad day because using bird screeches to make an enemy's ears bleed would have been hilarious. My friends and I were doing a Halloween based one shot one time, and the thing was that we all had to make our characters non-human, since the plot was that everyone got transformed into monsters. My friends went with pretty cool races like half-elves, a dampier, and something else I can't remember, unfortunately. As for me, a vain centaur that is questioning how the hell he's supposed to sit down in a chair now. It eventually became a bit of a running gag while we were going along with the story. My bro, the DM, joked that I had to wear horseshoes instead of my character's new Air Jordans, and one of our friends straight up thought of a way to make a chair for a centaur, which is practically just a chair for the front legs and a chair for the hind legs. Not sure if I'm going to get a good chance to use that character again, but boy, I'd love to use him again just for shenanigans like this. This one actually happened a long while ago, so I may forget some details, but I was trying out playing with a small group I found online. It was my first time outside my usual friend group, and I was a bit nervous, so I put everything I could into this character. The campaign was set during wartime on our continent, and I decided that I'd set my character up to be a part of the military from the start. So I created Lorda a young orc barbarian from a village of nomads who needed protection from the war, although they denied needing it as they were very headstrong. So I joined the military in hopes I could convince the generals or the higher ups to bring my people under their wing. The campaign started and I realized the party was actually all going to be soldiers in this two-sided war. Unfortunately for my character, but fortunately for me, I realized this had some very interesting roleplay implications. I'd fumble around the camp, still very new to the military. I miss training in the morning, oversleep, and make everyone mad with my clumsiness, never having had schedules like this and not knowing how a well-formed unit functioned. 
It didn't help that our general was uptight as hell and extremely strict. The party grew to like Loruda after we bonded in battle and helped him learn about the military. I still play with that group to this day, and while that campaign ended around six months ago, we're planning to start a new one this holiday break, and hopefully my character won't die at the end of this one. Oh yeah, Loruda died tragically, but that's a story for another time. Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here checking in after the vid. Leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified when we post or whenever we go live. And if you have a story to tell us anytime, anywhere, make sure to do so on our subreddit r slash Mr. Ripper. And if you want a little bit of extra content and some more juicy goodness, head on over to Riptovia on YouTube, which is our secondary channel full of all sorts of different stories that you otherwise wouldn't probably get here. Links are in the description below. Finally, using a help action, come say hi to me, your favorite narrator from Ohio, Brian Von Vier, over on YouTube and primarily over on Twitch. That being said, I try to end things on a positive note and today is no different. I just hope that everybody out there listening in is taking good care of themselves. I know it's really hard some days and really it's kind of a miracle that half of us get out of bed in the morning. So to that end, I say you're all worth a lot of love and you're worth a lot of respect. Please make sure to have some water today, have something good to eat, at least one good healthy meal. And if not, then please take some vitamins and minerals. One multivitamin a day will at least help out quite a bit. Brush your teeth before bed and make sure to take care of all your business so when you lay your head down at night, you can actually feel good rather than regretful or remorseful because you're worth it. You're worth a lot more than you think. All the love, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.